This is your crazy cool chick, Cola, and today on The Come Up, I'm going to be sitting down with a sultry singer that has also captured all of our hearts in the movie industry. Guys, it is going to be a fun one, and you do not want to miss any take of this action-filled interview. After moving back to Nigeria from the States, our guest today shot into the limelight with the song Strong Thing. He would go on to run a successful record label that jump-started the careers of Wizkid and Scales. With multiple hits, awards, and love for filmmaking, Banky W is definitely the epitome of a successful artist and businessman. I'm doing well, doing well. Look at you. I'm, clearly, I'm not keeping up with you. Like, you're, just, you're making me feel underdressed. No, no, you look good. Okay, so welcome to the come up. Thank you. On the show, we yeah. want to get to know who you are. Yeah, my parents <laughs> named me, um, well, W stands for Wellington, which is my last name, and Banky is short for Bankole or mm -hmm. Olu Bankole, which is my first name. So when you were growing up, did you always know that, like, you know, I, I kind of wanted to do this music thing, and were your parents really supportive at all? I'd probably say that from as far back as I can remember, I'd always wanted to become a musician. In fact, when I was growing up, my parents were always so worried that I was going to drop out of school and, uh, oh you know, gosh. say that I'm, on, I'm going to be, <laughs> you know, a musician, and that was it. So growing up, who would you say, like, your biggest supporter? My, my biggest supporter while I was doing kind of music and school were um, my siblings, so my sister and my brothers, and my best friend, Tunde Demora, and a couple of other key friends. Those were the people around me who kind of encouraged me to say, hey, guy, you're, you're onto something, or this, this thing sounds nice, and mm -hmm. this is dope, and you know, those were like really, like that, that was like my first fan club, so to speak. Oh. You know, I would do a show in Yankee in like some random hole in the wall place <laughs> in Brooklyn, <laughs> you know, that maybe the roof is falling off, but you know, my, my best friends and my sister and my brothers would all like There's call so their, their friends, mm -hmm. and you know, they would be the ones that would kind of pack the place. Oh my God, I love that. Okay, so when you would think uh, back then, because right now we're gonna, throw it to the music. Mm -hmm. What song or what artist would you listen to that kind of helped you to like hone your musical skills and push you and keep you going? I've always kind of listened to a, an, an entire expanse of music. So my favorite artist, if you can believe it, is Jay-Z. Oh. Which is interesting because I'm more RV. of a singer yeah. than a rapper. Still here with Banky W. Well, in the story of your journey, as we're telling it, mm. you're juggling school and your music. Mm -hmm. How hard was it to balance your responsibilities? If you are driven enough, if that goal is that important to you, if that music or that education or whatever it is that you're going for is that important to you, you will do whatever it takes to get it. The first income that we ever had was selling CDs out of the trunk of a car that was breaking down on almost on the daily, but that's where we started from. And that's what EME, that's the first income that EME ever had. And if we didn't do those things, if we didn't have those days, if we didn't, when nobody in the world knew who we were, and all we had was a dream and not even a dollar. But if we didn't do those, go through those times, then we would, I'm, I'm completely, completely sure that we wouldn't be here now, so. Okay, so what, so then what was that point when you decided that, you know what, I'm actually going to just leave this whole, like maybe trying to go to work thing and also do right. music or trying to focus on school thing and, like, and just be like, you yeah. know what, it's just music for me. In that time, you know, Nigerian music and Nigerian entertainment had started to grow. So I was, even though I was living in New York, I had met like LD, I had met okay. Two Face. Oh, wow. I had met people who kind of, inspired me to feel like, man, I'm supposed to be part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where, you know when you just kind of have this feeling that you're not in the right, this is not where you're supposed to be. Of you're course. supposed to move back home. You're supposed to be part of this scene. And at the time, when them Two-Face or the band or whoever would come to play their shows in, in America, I would open for them. So I actually even opened for Two-Face, I think, twice back then. Oh, wow. I remember in 2007, my sister was getting married in Nigeria, so we were going to come home. So I took like a month and a half off of work to help with the wedding, but also to just see what it was like, because I hadn't lived in Nigeria for, I don't know, 10 years or something. So I just wanted to see what the scene was like. And I came back and I just felt it in my spirit that this was where I was meant to be. So the next year, February 14, 2008, 
I quit my job. And at the time, my folks were worried, obviously, because they're like, ah, you want to, my mother would be like, you want to sing? Sing in the New York that you're, <laughs> if that you are singing in New York, they're what, you know? Because they didn't live in Lagos either. Mm. But um, it was probably, so far, at least career-wise, it's the best decision that I could have made. It was tough, but it was the best decision I made. Oh my goodness, yeah. okay. What, what song or what piece of music or artist would you say described how you were feeling? I would say um, anything that says, listen, I'm gonna make it, you know, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna keep pushing, and this thing is going to happen. So any song that play, plays <laughs> that message, you could play that joke. Okay, all right. All right, so you moved to Nigeria. Do you remember what was your first ever like major performance here in Nigeria? My first major performance was Ovation Red Carol 2007. I just got an opportunity, shout out to Dele Momodu, who was like, because he, he had come to a show in the States and seen me perform, and it was it was good, it was fun. And DJ Humility um, spent for me, because he was one of the people who had heard my music again and started just playing it because he thought that it was nice. So so when I came to the Vision Red Carol, he spun for me and I sang, okay. and it was nice, it was a good time. Um, would you say, if this is an awkward question, would you say it was a flop? The... No, no, definitely not. All right, so you just had your first major performance, but it was like, oh my God, that kid, thank you, W. What was the feeling like? Like, oh. oh, it was a great feeling. Um, you know, especially because I had come with the purpose of trying to see if I could kind of blend mm -hmm. into and find, like, carve out a, a space for myself in the industry. Mm -hmm. So performing, you know, at that show and you know getting a good response was like, okay, this is a bit of validation that you know we're gonna be okay. Yeah. All right, well we're, we're gonna hold off right before we get to that part. But actually, what I do want to know is, when you first got started, what is like the craziest amount and many like smallest amount of money mm -hmm. you ever got paid oh, to do a gig? Oh, show free, free ninety nine. When you're starting out, you perform for free. 90 something percent of the time. Was there ever somebody like during that time though that either said or did something to you that just made you feel like crap, I never I never want to be in this industry. I never want to do this music thing ever again. How, how many of those experiences do you want? <laughs> but like one person that like that when you think about I, it I'm today, not I'm not into like... I'm not into naming names. No, but, of course. But I will say that that very experience, I can I can give you story upon story upon story. I I've dealt with, it, but I've been wronged, I've been cheated, I've been stolen from, I've been. Uh, well, anyways. All right, but let's just leave on a bit of a positive note for this segment. Mm -hmm. What was that, Mama? I made it moment. I would say probably the first time I heard my song on the radio. Wow. That was just like, and and because it happened without me knowing somebody, just that moment alone was just like wow. In fact, in America, we pulled over the car. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask you, how did you and celebrate? And we sat down for the next three <laughs> and a half minutes and listened to the song, and just like wow. So you know, somebody actually played my song on the radio. Like it was so amazing to me. Well, actually, let's go to one of your favorite turn up songs that you like to listen to when you want to celebrate a big one. Let's listen to maybe a, a different one. Let's do a. Miami. Echo Miami. Echo yeah, Miami, yeah. So we're going to social media okay. right now. So Miss Shay Law wants to know, do you ever get used to being a celebrity? I'm probably, I am probably kind of strange in the sense that I don't really view myself in that light per se. And so I still make an effort on purpose mm -hmm. to do the things that I would always do and to live the way that I would normally live. So, I still do my own grocery shopping. I do my own laundry, I do my own cleaning. I cook for myself. I mean, I have cleaners that come once or twice a week, but by and large, like I'm a, I'm a do-it-yourself, self-sufficient kind of guy. If traffic wasn't so bad in Lagos, I'd probably drive myself too. Yeah. All right, and then the second social media question mm. comes from a good girl, Riri, mm -hmm. but not not bad girl. Not bad girl. Okay. This one is a good one. Got it. Um, so she wants to know, how did you land your first role in the wedding party? Oh, I auditioned for that. You actually wanted to? I auditioned. Oh. I auditioned for it. And, and I liked that they called me to audition because I don't, like I said, you know, we talked about before that 
the success that I understand is the success that you earn. Mm. I, I've never been just given things. I've never just kind of walked into open doors. Like I've always had to kind of struggle and fight and earn my way through. And when they said, hey, you know, we're doing this film, Auntie Mo actually called me and said, hey, we're doing this film and they want you to come and read for a part. That made me know that they were serious. And it wasn't just like, oh, you're Banky W, you have X number of followers, we'll let's just give you yeah, a role. We'll they, it showed that they were being serious about what they wanted to do. And I always wanted my first major role in a film to be in a serious production. Like, in fact, all my roles, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, will be in productions that take their time and their quality to get it right and to work on the chemistry between the different actors and all of that. I mean, there was definitely chemistry between you and, uh, <laughs> you know so, what? But yes, but we, we, I auditioned, I did so I auditioned, most of the people auditioned for the roles. Mm -hmm. There were a few people like, you know, you're not going to tell RMD to audition Action. or anti Rati and mm -hmm. things like that and people like that because they've earned that. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, but do not go too far. You are watching watching the come up on MTV base and as always we encourage you to join the conversation so be sure to tweet at us at MTV base west and use the hashtag the come up let us know if you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Banky W you know if you want to get all up in his business just DM him all right <laughs> we'll see you soon still to come on the come up I basically got hijacked by armed robber. They roughed me up, they beat me up. So the decision to get back in the studio at that point is probably my one of my best decisions. Welcome back to The Come Up. I have with me the amazing, incredibly multifaceted Banky W. Right now, um, in the journey so far, your career is on, on the up and up. You moved to Lagos, you're playing your music, you got great hits, people are like really starting to vibe. Um, what would you say that your greatest career highlight um, has been so far? December 31st, 2008, going into January 1st, 2009. At the end of 2008, I actually went to church, right? Mm -hmm to pray in the new year, because that's the way my mother raised me. So, I, so I'm praying and I'm like, you know, praying for my music career specifically. And on the way out, I basically got hijacked by armed robbers. And so, you know, they, you know, they, they roughed me up, they beat me up, they put me in the back of my own car. And you know, sometimes what separates the people that become successful from the people who give up on their dreams is just that decision that when you hit rock bottom, you Kukuma know there's nowhere else for you to go. So you just hold on. You just stay there and say, okay, I'm gonna try again. And maybe I'll do things a little bit different. So the decision to get back in the studio at that point and not throw in the towel and go back was probably my one of my best decisions because I got back in the studio with Kobam Zasuko and the first song I made was Strong Tin. Oh. And then the second song I made with, was with Dr. Fravs and that was Lagos Party. And that decision and that moment, I think for me personally was my biggest highlight because that's what actually turned my life around. It was those songs mm. that had people start saying, okay, where is the boy that sings that -na 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 song? Let him come and sing it here. Give him 100K, mm. give him, you know. Hey. And that's when everything started kind of shaping up for the better. And Wow, I I can't even imagine, and that's so strong of you mm. to, to to come back from that. And we're glad that you came back from that because you too. gave us the biggest Lagos anthem yeah. off of that. Yeah, it's a good song. Like, yeah. Would you be would you would you be okay if we play that song? I mean, of course. I just just, just want to make run sure. Run it, run it! <laughs> Hello, Lagos Party King in the building. Yeah. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Yeah. Right, we are going to listen to Lagos Party by Back EW. And fun fact about yeah. that music video, mm -hmm. um, somebody really special and dear to us here at MTV Base made a cameo mm. in it. Do you remember the other light skinned guy that was in the music video? There were a lot of people in the video. You, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to Wiz. No, no, no. no the cool. other light skinned guy. Which is cool? Chris. Oh, He's Chris! Like, yes! Yes, Chris is in the video! Chris is in the video! Actually, funny thing about Chris's scene. <laughs> is that shout out to Kemi I did it back yeah, she yeah, directed the yeah, video yeah. and Chris was her AD at the time mm -hmm. and we needed somebody to get slapped yes and we just didn't have anybody at the time so we just said yeah Chris come <laughs> stand here oh yeah and then and he took it like a champ I know Chris is amazing yeah I love yeah. it so yeah shout out to Big up Chris yeah and Chris for taking one for the team okay so EME 
you started it. You had lots of great artists. Mm -hmm. um, I personally love Neola. I think she has an amazing, beautiful, beautiful voice. Yeah. Now, we all know that you're currently engaged to Adesua, but yeah. was there ever anything going on? No, no, not at all. Because it was saying that, you know, the, you guys had a Do you know how many people that they've said this about me with? There are plenty. No, but with her, it was... I think that people just, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I think because of the kind of content that I've, that has been very relevant throughout my career, because I'm an R&B singer, so I mm -hmm. sing a lot of love songs, wedding mm -hmm. songs, and things like that. And so I think that people, generally speaking, were kind of very interested to see who I would end up with, when mm -hmm. I would finally settle down, when I would get married. There was you a know. poll, just so you know. Yeah? Yeah, I can't tell you with who, um, but they had girls that placed bets. And, wow, um, okay, yeah. yeah, see, so I think that, <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I think that people just were very interested in seeing me end up with someone and whenever that time would come. Mm -hmm. And so for the last 10 years, it's always been one person or another. At one point they said I, me and Cynthia Moga kissed in a club and we really were just okay. reaching over to give a hug and they were like, oh yes, we have this. Really. They, they've said it about so many people mm -hmm. that I just decided that it's part of the cross that I, I will yeah, bear. bear. And then more on EME. Mm -hmm. So how did WizKid kind of leave EME? Was it a case of contract was up, you got to bounce or? No, you know with Wiz, I think that you know, really with all of my artists, I, I've always liked artists who have a clear sense of who they are and what they want to do and what their, their vision is. That's really what happened with me and Wiz. It's like he just came to the point where he just felt like, you know, he wanted to try things his own way, he wanted to do his thing, and <coughs> we've still shared money since then. We've, mm -hmm. We still have a, a great big brother, little brother relationship. Mm -hmm. He's like my guy, like he's, you know, and the same thing for skills, and really everybody that I've ever worked with. And that's why till today, I still have a good relationship with everybody that I've ever worked with, because I'm just not, it's just not me. Like, I feel like God blessed me before you. God will continue to bless me after you. Mm -hmm. God will bless you after that's we're done right. working together. And that's fine, I'm good with right. that. Yeah. Do you see yourself ever recording with Wins again? Oh yeah. Definitely. We, we've, we've talked about it, we've joked about it, and when we hang out, we always say, oh, you know what, we should work together. But our schedules are very, very different now. Okay, and still on the EME matter, yeah. um, and I'm glad that you actually mentioned Skills, yeah. because Skills had taken to social media, and he has yeah. said something recently. Yeah. Um, you're saying, yeah, like, I, I cool, know, I, I know where you're Everybody sent me the tweets. Yes, of yeah. course, and he was talking about when EME kicked him out at the house. Right that Tamaya was the only person that kind of took him in. Yeah. Now, was that statement true? Did you kick Skills out of the house? Here's what I'll say. I've never kicked anybody out of any house ever okay. in my life. I've never, and Skills knows that. I think that in trying to, in trying to explain a, a point of view, and you know Twitter is limited, so yes. he tried to, to get a point across, which really the point of what he was saying is that Timaya came to his aid. Mm -hmm. And Timaya is a very good friend of mine. So I knew when all of that was happening and, and I was very happy for him. And it was great for him because he needed to be in a different musical environment. Mm. The only thing I've ever done for Skills is take care of him for five years, pay his way to university to make sure that he has a degree, and even at the point where his contract was up, I still rented the place that he stayed in for the rest of the year. So he still had an apartment for nine months. And I gave him seed money, like, listen, whatever it is you want to do next, okay. here's a little bit of cash. If you ever need anything, mm -hmm. call me. Yeah. You know, you know I'm here for you. Just let me know what you need and I'll always be there for you. And that's the relationship that we've had since. If he's ever needed me for anything, he knows he can call me. Same thing with Will, same thing for anybody that I've ever worked with. All right, well, whatever else it is that you guys want um, Banky to talk about or produce when it comes to his music, if it's a clapback or b album, you know, be sure to tweet at us at MTV Base West and use the hashtag to come up. Uh, I wanna actually leave it up to you to throw a song right now. The next two songs that you're gonna see, um, the first song is a song called Blessing Me, where I'm just being thankful for everything that is fantastic that's happened to me in my life. And the second song is called Kololo, also another beautiful song from Mr. Banky W off the Songs About You album. Get it everywhere available now. Thanks a bunch. Peace and love.
Welcome back to The Come Up, and this handsome gentleman sitting right next to me is Banky W. Thank you very much. <laughs> One thing I love about you is that you are always pursuing education and kind of just to better yourself. Mm -hmm. So you've always talked about how it was important for you to get your degree in engineering, mm -hmm. but then you went back to New York yeah. and you got your degree in film writing and directing. What mm -hmm. kind of motivated you to do that? Making movies was always part of the plan. Acting in them, writing them, and directing them. Uh, we are into advertising now. I'm into real estate. We're hoping to open a restaurant at some point. Um, there's just so many things that we have lined up, which is why I say that really, by the grace of God, this is only the beginning. And the, the, the idea, the, the challenge, and the mission is to continuously grow. Until the day that we stop breathing, you always want to keep trying for more. You always want to keep working. You always want to keep pushing yourself to see what else you can do, and that's what it's about for me. Were you expecting the love that came out of seeing you and Adeswa's love story transition from screen into real life? I will say that we're very grateful for the outpouring of love and prayers and encouragement and support that we receive from people all over the world and from fans and mm. just people who are seeing things that are happening. So. Um, really gratitude is the word for us and Aww. hopefully we can, you know, continue to build from here and have a lifelong special thing. We're actually going to go to a love song because okay. I love love okay. and you're kind of like the king of R&B here in Nigeria. So. I don't know if that, I don't know, I, I feel like that title, I think I've, I've held that title for many years mm -hmm. and I'm just grateful that I was one of the people that was able to open the door. And we are still here on the come up with Mr. Banky W. Yes, ma'am. And um, he's still here, so which means that I wasn't too hard on him, right? Like you don't walk off. Oh, it just so. means I'm a nice guy. Did you ever regret not pursuing music in the U.S.? I have zero regrets about not staying back in Yankee. I have zero regrets about being in Nigeria now. I have zero regrets about the way that my life has played out because. I'm very blessed, man. I'm, I'm, I get to do what I love to do for a living. How many people can actually say that they wake up and they enjoy going to work every day? Okay. You know, I work for myself. I'm chasing after my dreams. And by God's grace, I'm achieving them one little piece at a time. And I'm leaving some impact in the world behind me. And really, that's what you pray for at the end of the day. So, mm. no, zero regrets for me, man. I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. Even with the, the tough times that I've been through, uh, I'm lucky. I'm a very fortunate, blessed guy. So no complaints, no regrets. No. Oh, there we go. All is well that ends well, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break, but do not leave us. Always join in on the conversation on social media. Tweet at us at MTV Base West and use the hashtag The Come Up. You are watching The Come Up on MTV Base. Still to come on The Come Up. I'm a fan of great artists. I'm a fan of good music, so... Any opportunity that I get to work with anybody that is doing mm -hmm. fantastic things, I'll jump at it, always. It's been a good time. We're That's rounding that. up, though. We're okay. rounding up because you're a busy man, so you got things to do. This is true. Um, and speaking of those things, I want to know what, what some of those things are. So what are you working on? Like, what are you up to? Um, what I'm working on now, um, I'm about to drop a new single off the songs about you. Uh, and it's called Love You Baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can't tell by the title, it's a love song. I had no idea. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. That's what I do, I clarify. <laughs> um, but it's a very sweet song. Um, it's a song that I uh, was produced by Kobam Zasukwa, and mm -hmm. you know, we did Strong Thing and Yes No, and so many of my, yeah. my I love you, good yes, songs. No, by the way. Thank you. That dance note. <laughs> what? <laughs> so we have that song, and then we have another song called What You Doing Tonight. So those will probably be the videos to, to, to put out. I'm sleeping. For the end of this year, it's time to wake up. What are you doing tonight? No, you said what you're doing tonight. I'm sleeping. Uh, what, what you doing? Wow. Okay. I mean, Moving I, I thought it was a question. Uh, wedding party part two comes out in December. So we're excited yes. about that. Um, hopefully we can do even more with this one than what we did with the first one. But I'm very excited about what that's going to do. Is there anybody else that you would like to work with in the future that you haven't worked with? I mean, you've done a lot, but... Um, anybody that's making good music at this point, I think. I'm a fan of great artists, I'm a fan of good music, so any opportunity that I get to work with anybody that is doing mm -hmm. fantastic things, I'll jump at it, always. All right, um, well, this is towards the end, basically, you know. Towards, because yeah. the drink has finished. It's right? finished, yeah, yeah, so the drink is it's finished. Time to so, move. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the end of, of our time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Banky, for Thanks being for here. Um, but before we go, I can't have, like, a musical genius like you next to me and not ask mm. if you could sing us something. Okay. 
I'll send you something. I, let's take it back since we did the whole story. Yeah. Let me introduce myself and Banky W. Don't mean to trouble you. Need to know if you will let me. Slap, slap for me. Okay. Show you that you got me in the mood. Many things that we can do. Baby, be cool, child. Oh, more you that push my button, ting, ting. Blow my horn. Down my number ring. Things you do. Oh, more you that make my heart go bim, bim. Make me wanna sing, sing. Hey! 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 Thank you very slap, much. Slap, slap, yeah, button, yeah, man, yeah. Team. Appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, final countdown, final question. I feel like you have lived a very inspirational life, and being just around you for mm -hmm. however long we've been talking, mm -hmm. you've dropped so many gems. So if you could look back on your life, what type of um, quote or w word of motivation that you would like to tell your fans at home? I'll say this, dream big, start small, and never let small minds tell you that your dreams are too big. Mm. And I'll end on that note. Ooh, I like that, okay. Yeah. All right, guys, this has been an amazing episode of The Come Up. Uh, was talking to Banky W, had a great conversation, learned lots of things, and I want to hear from you guys. What was it that you guys took away from this interview? What do you wish that you would have learned more? Um, and you can try your luck at DMing him and you know adding him and seeing if he'll be able to answer some of your questions. Uh, but as always, tweet at us at MTV Base West. Use the hashtag The Come Up, and I will see you guys next next week same time same place same girl but a different special guest yeah so thank not, you. not quite as special as this one but no, you know not quite as special <laughs> thank you thank you thanks man cheers thank you right.